guys, welcome back to Motivation for Christian with Azron. Today we'll be doing Bible study Saturdays. Today we have Brother Gio with us. We will be covering John chapter 8. And to begin, we'll start off with a prayer by me and then we'll do an end in prayer by Brother Gio and we'll get right into the word for today. May you bow your heads and close your eyes. Reverence for God. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice me, God, and God. We thank you for just another day to be able to dwell in your word, to be able to discuss your word and just understand your word, God. We pray that we'll be able to have a good comprehension of your word, God. We pray there will be key information in here that we need to know and be able to apply to our life, God. We pray as we come together each and every week as well as to continue to help each other sharpen our tools to know more about you to become better aware of what we're trying to do become better aware of what we're trying to where we're trying to go to and just continue to just work on improving ourselves God. we just pray that you continue to be with us each and every day each and every week uh, in jesus and bless name god amen. amen 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 john chapter eight um let's get right into it Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives and and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they had set her in the midst They say unto him, This woman has taken in adultery in the very act. She got caught uh, doing something with somebody else that wasn't her husband. You're going to leave it at that. (laughs) Keep it PG-13. All right? But notice notice who brought her in. Who brought her in? The Pharisee. When we learn about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and like they're like, so you already know what they're up to, because they they don't necessarily agree with this quote unquote Jesus guy calling himself equivalent to God, and so you already know for the simple fact that if they're bringing somebody in, they're looking for some there's some type of ulterior motive. All right, so let's figure out what what they're up to. So. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? So now they're trying to question Jesus. Like in, in the Mosaic law, um, they're, they're, they're reminding Jesus of the Mosaic law. Like, yo, listen, you know the rules is if you some money get caught in adultery, we, we ought to stone them, right? So, but what do you say? about this type of act, what should be the punishment? And verse six says, this they said, this they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus, see, that's what they was up to. They're trying to set him up to see what he would say so that they could have some type of excuse to get him prosecuted uh, against the to, to get him in trouble, I guess, um, against the higher officials. Some way, somehow, to try to figure out a way to, to either get him killed or thrown in jail. But check Jesus, right? Look at my guy. But verse 6 says, But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Just straight look. You know, <laughs> they ask him a question, all excited and everything, and he just got off the stoop, <clears throat> went down, took his fingers started drawing in the dirt. Verse 7 says, so when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Jesus is the goat. And he again stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out 
one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those those uh, those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Bro, tell me what just happened, bro. Jesus happened. Just like, when I tell you he's just able to see through the shenanigans, like just see through the trickery and the games of man's heart, right? And, and you know, and, and, I, and I wish like I had something to like dig a little deeper and figure out why, why he did, he did the writing in yeah, the Why did he start writing in the dirt? You know what I mean? Like, what was that about? What was that about? And I'm pretty sure there's some significance. I know Jay usually has that that that, that fancy study Bible with the with the notes and everything. Um, but aside aside from him doing what he did, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so writing in the ground with, with his finger. His response to to what they were doing was like he knew what they were doing. He knew what they were up to, and like I said, like when he, when he responds, he hits the the root of the problem. He goes right to the root of it, and he's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, she did that. Cool. Anybody in here without sin? You're good. Good. Y'all y'all throw the first stone on her, and immediately, boom! Everybody's like." Whoa. Uh, he got that one. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> he got that. I'm, 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 I'll be back. He got that one. Right. And, and this is important, bro, because today in society, people are so, I mean, even from day one, people are so judgmental, so judgmental. And Jesus wanted them to understand that law, the laws that were given by Moses, were given to Moses to give unto the, the house of Israel. It was to, help them realize what sin was and 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 to to get them to try to understand that it is more than these laws that God wants from them God wants their hearts their dedication their commitment their obedience to him so he gave them so he gave them these Ten Commandments, and out of these Ten Commandments, they made almost 600 plus laws, I believe. And it's just like, Jesus is like, listen, let's, let's really get to the nooks and crannies of these things. So you want to judge her? Cool. I'm going to judge you with the same mindset that you judge her. So I'm going to hit you with this question. Let's be careful not to cast judgment on people. Because we ourselves have heart problems. We ourselves have issues on the inside of us, right? Let's be mindful of that. But then now look, look, look at the opportunity that Jesus presents now, right after that. Everybody leaves, and who's left? And the woman. Woman. And then, and this is, this is the, this is the, this, this is literally one of the prime reasons Jesus came to earth. Not to condemn, not to harm, not to hurt, not to, you know, banish people and, and cast them down into hell. He came to save people. He says, they didn't condemn you and neither do I. Therefore, go and sin no more. <sighs> there was her second chance. There was her second chance. I just pray that whatever she did with it, it was the right thing, right? So be mindful who you mindful how you judge people, how you see people, because you must first check yourself, all right? So go we go on verse twelve says then spake Jesus again unto them saying, "I am the light of the world. 
He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. That record is not true. They're like, yo, who, who are you? Like, how, how can you say these things of yourself? Like, come on. <laughs> Verse 14 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, you should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who are you? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and, ju and to judge of you, but he that has sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he hath sent me, and he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Yo, Jesus is so good. See, like, they, still, they still not getting the point. Like, I get it. I was reading it, but they they just pointed out the part like they're not like seeing the full message they just point out the part that that they, they that they can be, like use against use against the guy I mean Jesus yeah so like they Jesus says I am the light of the world and he that followed me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life if we walk in Jesus if we walk in his spirit his spirit and darkness can't go together. His spirit and sin can't go together, right? We'll shy away from sin, you know what I mean? And he said, as long as we're walking with him and in him, we sin no more. But that has to be all, all the time, intentionally at all times, right? And he's Pharisee dudes again, going again, like saying, yo, like, who do you think you are, bro? Like, and you keep talking about this father, somebody who sent you and, and she's like, okay, that's your law. Cool. But isn't it in your law that if two men uh, touch and agree, then, then, then you have to believe their testimony and their testimony is true. Okay, cool. So guess what? Two men, me and my father, we come, I do nothing of, I do nothing unless he sent me. So he's taking their law and making them realize without them even realizing that Jesus came to fulfill the law. Not to get rid of it, but to fulfill it, to actually live out the way it was supposed to be lived out when it was given to them. 
Jesus on earth fulfilling the law that he God gave to Moses. But he's also, but he also is realizing now he's just talking to the Pharisees who he says are going to die in their sin because they just don't, they don't get it. Their hearts are not in the right place. And this is the part that like really gets to me because I really want everyone to go to heaven. Like no one deserves to go to hell. But Ezra, and there's just people in this world. They just, they just won't. Listen. They just won't allow themselves. Their hearts, man. They, they just, they just will not allow themselves to to hear what God has to say. And then some people will hear it, and they just would ignore it. And they just, they get so caught up with the world. And bro, we got to be careful. We got to be even more careful because the Pharisees is 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 symbolic of the people in the world in this chapter, right? Mm -hmm. But then look, if you, and then, but then this is us, right? It says in verse thirty, it says, "As he spake these words, many believed on him." So they're hearing him talking about how he is equivalent with God the Father. God the Father sent him. And everything that God the Father tells him to do, he does. He's being obedient. And just that that alone, his testimony alone, alone caused him to believe on him. But he says in verse 31, he says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Geo and Ezron, as long as you continue to listen to my word, read it, digest it, meditate on it, and above all, obey it, then you will be my disciples, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a disciple is just simply uh, a student, someone seeking after uh, a teacher is as a student. And it says, keep following me, keep learning about me, keep my word in your heart, in your mind, keep thinking about it and you will be fine. It says, and you shall know the truth. I love that. Keep reading my word. And, and and you shall know the truth. And guess what? The truth shall set you free. Jesus is the truth. We just found out that he is the light and he is the truth. And, then, and he shall set you free. When you read the Bible with somebody who doesn't necessarily read the Bible themselves, I love it. I love, 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 love. When you be like, when you read something, they be like, that's where that come. I never even heard of that before. Oh my gosh. And it's just like their minds are blown. Um, and it's like, but that's the truth. You know, like I remember one time I had to explain to my daughter about the rainbow. School has some type of like uh they call it spirit week, right? where they allow them to come in with like pajama day, twin day, wacky tacky day. Um, um, sport JC day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then one year they had something called, um, I think it was called rainbow day or tie dye day or something like that. It was like rainbow. I think it was rainbow day. And I was like, I walked, I went all the way up to the school. I went to the office and I was like, um, what's this? <laughs> and the dude looked at me, he was like, bro, you don't have to have her participate if you don't want to. She can just come in her uniform. I said, okay, good. Cause I'm, I'm glad we were on the same page. And I was just like, why, why are we forcing lies onto people? And and then you make them you make them buy into it. And we, we gotta be bro, we have to be careful. We have to read this book. If you are a believer, bro, you have to read this book because if not, the news will teach you how to live your life. Channel 12, channel set, whatever set, whatever channel you're looking at on your that medias, IG, Facebook, what have you will teach you how to live your life. And that's according to these crazy people in this world. 
the, the book, bro, is what's going to teach us how to live our lives. And he says, the truth shall set you free. And when they responded, he said, they answered him. And she, so, so when I had to sit her down, I said, yo, listen, pull up, pull up Genesis. We're going to learn about this rainbow. I want you to understand what the real symbol rain, of the rainbow is. Like, what's the real meaning of the symbol of the rainbow? And we had to learn about um, Noah. God said, I'm going to put my bow in the sky as a reminder that I will never flood the earth again. Some way, somehow, a rainbow got associated with pride. I'm not even sure how that happened. But that's just the lies that the world does. They take things and they just manipulate them, bro. And they associate things with the wrong thing. And if we're not... We're not wise enough to continue to read this book and understand who God is, then we'll just get ourselves caught up. And it says here, I love this part. It says, the truth shall, set, shall make you free. Look how they answered. It says, they answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and we never and and we're and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? First of all, Y'all were slaves well after God had made his uh, promise to Abraham. So that's the first thing. You don't even talk about Know your history, right? But secondly, God is not talk. Jesus is not talking to them about the physical bondage. He's talking about the spiritual bondage. The spiritual bondage about being made free, right? We're bond, we're bound by so many things, the spirit of perversion, um, the spirit of lust, um, you know, uh, the, the, the spirit of, 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 of just rage and ang anger, the spirit of fear. God came to set us free from all these things. It says in verse 34, Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin, is the servant of sin a servant bro you always gonna eat somebody has to come up to you like they have to they have to come and ask you what you want they're serving you that's it they're serving that's their job jesus is saying Yo, you're serving sin like you have to you have to do sin like that's what this thing is like like if you, you continue to serve sin and, and 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 it says whoever so committed sin is a servant of it. It's like it's almost like when you do a little sin, and then you end up doing a little bit more sin, and then a little bit more sin, and, and it just causes you to continue to sin because you just sin separates you from God. And so the further away from God you get, look, 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 it's God, it's God. Sin separates you from God. And the further away from God you get, the more desensitized you become of his spirit. I notice God is not moving. And then people are like, I can't feel God. I don't really feel it. You know, even people who are baptized, people who gave their lives to God, they just continue to move off until they're completely away from God. But notice God never left. God is still with them. And to, be, to, and to illustrate this a little bit further, it's like this. It's more like this is God. And this is them moving away from God. And this is what God doing. Where you going, kid? I love you. I die for you. Come back. Please hear me. I love you. Hey, it's God again. I'm with you. Do you hear me? Do you have time for me today? Hey, I just saved your life. That dude was getting ready to shoot you in your head. Oh, he was getting ready to get hit by that car. I'm still with you. You wasn't going to wake up this morning. There was a demon on top of you. And you're attacking you in your sleep. But I was there. You got time for me? here <laughs> yeah exactly I'm, I'm here i'm here verse 35 and it says verse 34 says jesus answered them verily verily i say unto you whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin and the servant abideth not in the house forever but the son abideth ever and if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed he who the son sets free is free indeed right 
It says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Well, this is why I met people in church. Been in church for 18 million years. I've been in church since I did. Matter of fact, as soon as I was born, the doctor brought me to church. I've I've been born in the church. I'm in the church. I've been in church all my life. I am church, Facts. church, church. Facts. Facts. But the hearts are ice cold, bro. Ice cold. They could spit the Bible, and it's crazy. They can spit the Bible to you. They 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 know verse by verse. They know songs. They know when to get up and clap. When to shout hallelujah. When to when to scream praise Jesus. They know how to look the look, walk the walk. But their hearts are ice cold. Their hearts are nowhere near Jesus. And that's what these people are saying. Like, oh, we come from Abraham. We, we're, 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 we're a selective breed. We're, we're from the top of the top, the cream of the crop. The elegant <laughs> feet. Yeah, right. And 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 then here he goes, like, yo. And this is like this is like Jesus, like, yo. Y'all y'all to go to church. Y'all go to church. And y'all Christians, but yeah, y'all trying to judge me and kill me. What? That's not how Christians are supposed to roll. All right, verse 38 says, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. See, I'm doing what the father in heaven taught me to do. You're doing what the, your father on earth taught you to do, which is worldly things, things that are not what God wanted us to do. In verse 39, it says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. If you was a Christian, like you said you are, you would do the works of a Christian. Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham was like, Abraham. yeah, like, I mean, and, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Abraham was a liar. You know, he got himself caught up, him and his wife. And he was like, yo, listen, if they ask you who I am, to be like, yo, you my sister, right? Like, so Abraham had fault too, but his heart was close to God. His heart was close to God. And and it's just like us, like we make mistakes, but we have to get back up again. And we have to remain in this walk. And 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 God and Abraham were like this, like they were it were tight. And so he says. Verse 41 says, you do the deeds of your father, not Abraham, but your father on earth. It says, it says, then said they to him, we be not born of fornicators. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I, my, came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. The devil is a liar. When he speak a lie, he speak of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's, hears God, God's word. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. If ask yourself, was there a point in your life where you just wasn't hearing what God was saying to you? Like you and God was just that relationship was non-existent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I sit and think about it. Like even I was praying as I was praying last night during service, and we were covering the youth. I was just thinking about every all all the youth and even even my friends, like you know, that are still out there in the world. I just ask God to just go after them, like, like, like chase them down, like how he did me, because they, they need it just like I need it, you know, 
and 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 then once you accept the call, you you need it even more because it's the world is still trying to pull on you, pull you back in, and the gravitational pull of the world just becomes stronger. Sin just becomes so much, so much brighter in your face. It's just like ah, I'm sin. Come get me. I want you. <laughs> All in your ear, like <laughs> it's like it just become like a mosquito, <laughs> like, it like mm-hmm. it was a big tug of war between me, bro, bro. I was, I was not, I was not trying to, I was not for it. At all. I was not even trying. So, so Jesus is checking them, and, and this is the type of stuff that happens in church sometimes. We'll get like a guest preacher, and here they'll come and be like, oh. So y'all thought y'all was Christian, Christian. Let me explain something to you. Come, let me hit. Come, 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 come. Let me check you real quick. Come here, come here. That's what Jesus is doing. He's checking them. In verse 48, he says, Then answered up the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Now they're trying to say, like, yo, you the devil, Jesus. And she's like, no, 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 no. I ain't the devil. I'm from God. And verse 50 says, and I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. I know, I know Jesus just be confusing them so much. Like, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? You mean tell me, you mean tell me if I just do what God tell me to do, I'm gonna never die? What does that mean, Ezra? Tell me. Um, it means that yeah, obviously you're gonna die physically, but not spiritually. There you go. That's it, brother. That's it. I said, he and Jesus is so focused on the spirit, and all they just see is what they see with their natural eye, right? And verse 52 said, Then said the Jews unto him, Now, now we know that you have a devil. Now you bugging, right? What do you mean? <laughs> Abraham <laughs> is dead. Like, like Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and you say, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of the death. Taste of death, right? Yeah. So they're pretty much saying, bro. Our forefathers are dead, and they kept the word. So what you talking about? You chatting. In verse 53, art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets that are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. But it is of my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. I'm not bigging myself up. The father is doing that, right? He's going to give me honor. I'm just doing what he's telling me to do. And verse 55 says, Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a, a liar like unto you. I might, I might be a liar just like you. But I know him, and I keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old and hast thou seen Abraham and Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am man I love that I love when Jesus just talks about his sovereignty and and how he's the alpha and the omega like he's the beginning and the end before there was an Abraham I, I am right like not I was I am He different. Who are you talking to, bro? Stop playing with me. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> I... He different. But one thing I liked about with Jesus is that he always gave God credit. Like, I don't understand why they kept saying, like, he why they kept saying um that he wasn't doing it. Because literally, he always, always made sure that he was giving God credit. He was never saying, like, nah, he never said that this is all me and that like that. He literally, every, almost every sentence he, he either began or end with, he made sure that he he uh, mentioned the Father in it. So I was, I'm really confused on why he kept trying to say, like, he's just saying all them stuff by himself. All this stuff. But, man, he acknowledged that 
God sent me, and He's speaking through me. That's it. That's it. So, so, and that, that's good for you too, bro. Like I said, like you know, what I'm saying when, 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 when this YouTube thing kick off or whatever, you know, what I'm saying like your your social media joint kick off. To God be the glory. That's it. You know, go oh, great job and great. Oh, we love you, Ezra. I oh, think. Listen. It's all, all God. It's all God. It's all God. And these people are tying themselves with Abraham, who they didn't even know. They just understand that their their lineage is from him. Abraham was a father of faith. A father of faith. God gave him one of the almost like ultimate tests. Like, Take your son, the only son, and go kill him for me real quick. Ooh. Grabbed his son and was getting ready to take him out. And the angel came and said, whoa, okay. I see you about that. Like, <laughs> just chill out. Just chill out. Just, just testing you out. I ain't know he's going to go that far. But now I see your faith in me. Now I see how real it is. You understand that God gives and God take away. You have faith in me. You're down the ride to the end. I want to dub you father of faith. That's who you are. And these people are saying they come from him. They're only going by word of mouth, like the culture that was passed down from generation to generation. And that's likewise with us, with the youth. They don't know God for themselves. They don't know their heavenly father for themselves. They only know by what their earthly father is telling them and their earthly father and their earthly parents' experiences with God. But we have to get them to understand who Christ is for themselves. Yeah. And what better way to do it than to get into this word like how you're doing, bro? Yeah. But we also, yeah, we also got like a, we also got to blame in that because obviously, because with children's church, obviously, like they teach you, they get you on track, but then when you go upstairs, it's like you walk in a room full of people that you don't know and literally just sitting and observing every single thing, not even trying to learn. Like it's not even like somebody coming over and be like, "Hello, my name is this. This is what we doing. Come be a part of it." And I think that's, that right there, to me, is, like, a big reason. Also, also, we use play a part in it. But that, too, play a part in it and why so many youth is not connected because they just enter in that atmosphere and nobody is acknowledging that they're in that atmosphere and trying to bring them along into that atmosphere. Bro. You can't expect nothing to happen if you don't bring somebody into it. Cause I could, I could literally just be here every single Saturdays in these Bible study and not learn nothing and not get anything from it. But because I'm drawn in and like y'all make sure that I understand what I'm, what we doing and join me and I'm able to understand. I'm able to learn more. And that's the only way you got to draw the person in. You got to talk to them, make sure like they know what's up and you understand and they understand what's, what we're trying to do. That's the only way, that's the only way that's, that will work. It's crazy, bro, because it's like, like, like you said, you, you have to first start off with building a relationship with somebody. It's like, the world is in a different place right now. It's, it's different from before where you can just simply tell of your testimony or tell somebody about your experience with God and people are like, oh, tell me more. Now it's like, you got, you got to take the time to build a relationship with them. You got to like, you know, become cool with them and then, you know, kind of like invite them to church and then, you know, slowly get, you know, not to say it's taken away from the power of God, but the, the 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 world and its hold that it has on the people, it's it's just different. It's, it's scary. It's scary, bro. It's scary. And and our job is to go out and and share the word boldly with great power great inspiration and guidance and direction from the Holy Spirit. And just pray that people will listen to it. They will hear it. Every ear has to hear the gospel and every knee will bow. That's what the Bible says. 
So I just pray that all the ears that hear it, or as many ears as possible that hears it, they will bow down and serve God. And so just to finish up the last verse, it says, Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. It's Jesus, not Jesus, turn a lot to, 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 uh, to die. You, know, you, just, you call a Christian out, like, yo, listen, you ain't, no, you ain't about this Christian life like you think you are. And then they get tight. Because who are you to tell me who I am? Like, you're not, you're not nobody better than me. And I, listen, I'm just a messenger from God. This is the message that he told me to give to you. I'm sorry. Don't. I'm just a messenger. And now you're looking to kill me because I'm trying to tell you about yourself so you can better yourself. But you're so caught up with yourself thinking you're on this high platform, you need to come down. Or even worse, I'm trying to tell you that you need to get you, give your life to God, but you want to stay in the world because it's just you think that that's the right thing to do, but it's not. And deep down inside, bro, people in the world, I think there's more people in the world that know, like, yeah, nah, I shouldn't be living like this. I shouldn't be living like this. But they just still choose to do so anyway. It's crazy. But, you know, it's... I just keep praying, man. Keep pushing, praying that this thing gets out. Your your inspiration touches as many people as possible. Sure. And just you know, I really want the message to be sent out. Forget me. I really don't care about me. Just I, the message, the message, the message. That's all I'm worried about. Forget everyone holding. The message is what we, what I'm focused on. And one thing I've been reading lately is like with, with the whole criticism and um, what the Bible says about it. It says like when you hear criticism, listen, be um, be fast to listen and slow to speak and devour whether it's good criticism or bad criticism. And try to see like, does this apply to my life? Does this go? And I think that's something that really the people, the Pharisee and all them people should have done with God's word, God, Jesus' word. Because to me, if they really sat down there, I mean, obviously some people are going to ignore it, but if they really, really thought about, thought about what Jesus was saying and try to see, does this align with what I'm doing? Does it not? That could have, that could have helped with more people believing but because they have that old mentality and they was not even trying to, they would not, they would not for that or they was not even trying, trying to acknowledge it, nothing like that. No, bro. I just pray that we all get it, man. We all get it. And even those who call themselves Christians, man, I pray that they get it too, man. I pray that we all get it. I just, I don't know, it just made me sad sometimes, bro. But I ain't gonna go no further, but that's it. <laughs> that's it for me. I get what you're saying, especially how this year going. I mean, this year was an amazing year for me. But I can't say, I can't speak for everybody. Yeah, I mean, definitely, certainly people went through a lot of different roller coasters, bro. But they just understand that they went through it and that was what that roller coaster didn't take them out because there's a lot of people that's in the box right now. A lot of people below grade in the dirt. And for whatever reason, God kept a lot of people. It wasn't their turn to go. Was it, was it people just go out here walking around all willy nilly, not even thinking like, "Yo, I could have died, but God kept me." I wonder why. I should probably go figure that out. God, why did you keep me? What do you have for me? What purpose do you have?
Okay. Check you, yo, check your heart, bro. That's check your heart. Check your heart. See where you stand with God. Before you go and judge somebody, before you go and say and declare that you're a Christian, are you walking this walk? Because it's so easy to talk to talk. That's it. I approve this message. <laughs> uh, do the end do the end of prayer and I'll do my I'll do my outro. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Father, we give you glory and honor. Praise because you are worthy. You are the I am that I am. You are El Shaddai God Almighty. You are Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the one who created this day, Lord God, and thought it not by chance for us to see this day. And for that, again, we say thank you. Father, you are righteous. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord God. You are the light of this world, O oh Lord. We thank you for the many things that you've taught us about in this chapter alone about yourself, how you've come from the Father and you do the things of the Father. And if we continue to obey your word, get your word in us and obey your word, then we are your disciples. We will walk in the light and not of the dark. Father God, thank you for what you revealed to us unto you in, in your word, Lord God, that we shouldn't cast stones unto others, Lord God, and judge them, Father God, for we will be judged with that by that same measure of judgment and that we ought to look in the mirror ourselves and and see father god where we stand with you what's our heart position concerning you father god help us to examine ourselves father god before we go out and judge others help us to figure out where we stand with you are we in line with your word are we following your will are we seeking you diligently for your purpose in our lives Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word, Father God, that we will not walk in this world blindly, but we can use his word, Lord God, as a guidance, as a roadmap, as the blueprint to live in this life. May we never boast of ourselves, Lord God, but may we always and forever boast in you and brag on your name because you are the one that we can do everything with. You are the reason we exist, Father. Before Abraham existed, you were Thank you. May we go out into this world today, Father God, and not be of it, but be the light in it. And that they too, Lord God, can want to be a part of this light. Have your way in us, Holy Spirit, wherever we may go, watch what we may say, Lord God, even now protect us in this holiday weekend, Father God. Again, we say thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, guys, this is the end of the video. This is Motivation for Christians by us. And thank you guys so much for coming back each and every week with us. Don't forget to like this video, share it with somebody that you think needed. Subscribe and turn on your post notifications. That way, anytime I upload, you'll get that notification. That's it. Peace.